but I don't think you have much hope of, of reaching a public that doesn't have a professional need to know. Professional need to know. I completely agree with that. I almost think you'd scare the public if you put this out. Like, why are they telling me this? Should I be concerned about my bank? Mm. Like, my insurance company doesn't tell me what they're doing with my assets. They just assume they're going to pay my claim. Where do Kanehis? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. So in this one, we're going to be talking about whether our money is safe in the banks. Spoiler alert, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> I'll be talking about things that they don't want us to know about. Uh, I mean, this, this is words from your mouth, really. I'll play a video that specifically shows that. Uh, but before we get into it, please hit the like button, subscribe as well. If you aren't already, be sure to catch future videos. And also share this video out by the end of it, because I do believe people do need to know about this. Before we get started, I always like to explain things. Uh, what are bank deposits exactly? So bank deposits are liabilities for the bank. So reading from this, I mean, this is an AI summary, but it says, yes, a deposit is a bank's liability because it represents a contractual obligation to repay the depositor, us. This is recorded in the bank's balance sheet as a liability. So a liability is basically a debt. This is what the bank owes us. Once we give the banks our money, once we deposit our money into a bank, they are suddenly indebted to us. It is no longer ours. We are creditors. In the second paragraph, it says, when you deposit cash into a bank account, you give up the legal title to the cash, which becomes the bank's asset. In exchange, the bank promises, promises, to pay you back the amount you deposited, either on demand, so when you go to um, an ATM machine and you take cash out, that's on demand, or after a certain period, depending on the type of account. So think maybe a fixed, fixed savings account after a year or so, they give you back your money. It might be a bit unsettling to know this, but it is important that you do. Um, but good news is, the good news is FDIC and FSCS insure our deposits. So what are these acronyms? The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, and the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, FSCS, uh, basically insure our deposits. Uh, for the FDIC, that's for America, it is up to $250,000 uh, per depositor's account. And for the UK, it is the FSCS, which protects up to 85,000 pounds. Now, this is what they tell us. That's, this is what they tell us. However, however, this is the important part. Not all of it is backed. So they have a fund. They have a fund that is $129 billion. That's for the FDIC alone. That's the insurance fund. That's the insurance fund. However, in terms of money supply, there is $21 trillion. So it's not fully backed. The, the bank deposits, sure, M2 is made of uh, money markets as well. But in terms of banks, bank deposits, bank deposits forms part of M2. It is not fully backed. The insurance fund has less than the total number of bank deposits. But that's not all. We have what is up next, something called bill-ins. So... Those of you who remember the 2007-2008 financial crisis will have heard of bill outs. That's when the taxpayer pays for a failing bank. However, bill-ins, bill-ins are where the creditor, us, the depositor, pays for the failing bank. Key takeaways, it's a, it's a pretty long article. I will post it in the description if you'd like to go through it uh, in your own time. But key takeaways... Big banks were deemed too big to fill following the financial crisis of 2007-2008, resulting in government bailouts at the expense of taxpayers. Financial reforms under the Dodd-Frank Act eliminated bailouts and opened the door for billions. So the Dodd-Frank Act, um, it tries to make sure banks are well capitalized. They are. <laughs> They are. Uh, so billions allow banks to convert debt into equity to increase the capital requirements. Remember, our deposits are the bank's liability, and that is debt. So they're converting our deposits into 
their financial assets in order to make themselves whole again. So bill-ins and bill-outs are designed to prevent the collapse of a failing bank. The difference between the two primarily lies in who bears the financial burden of rescuing the bank. Skipping the middle paragraph, bill-ins provide immediate relief when banks use money from their unsecured creditors, the depositors, us, including depositors and bondholders to restructure their capital. Banks can convert their debt into equity to increase their capital requirements. Banks can only use deposits over the $250,000 protection provided by the FDIC. So they claim. So they claim. This is just to make us feel happy, make us feel content with trusting them with our money. They say, oh no, it's only, it's only the accounts that have uh, money in them that are over the insurance limit that will be affected. Mm, I don't think so. I'll come back to that point in a bit. So... This is a chart of banks' unrealized losses. So a lot of them leveraged up uh, during the pandemic because there were low rates. They borrowed money from the government and then they basically put it into bonds and treasuries. But unfortunately, central banks have been raising rates. They've been raising interest rates. So bond yields have been going up and the asset value of those bonds have been going down. Now... This is a very this is a very telling chart. It's quite worrying to be honest. So this is the Great Financial Crisis of two thousand and eight, two thousand seven, two thousand eight. That's the losses there. Look at it now. <laughs> Look at it now. <laughs> Look at it now, guys. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? And and they're trying to tell us the economy is fine. They're trying to tell us everything's okay. Look elsewhere, focus on other things, nothing to see here. The banks are fine, your money is safe. It's not. Guys, it's not. Uh, and here's a video straight from the horse's mouth from an interview uh, on Kitco News. This is where I, I, I got the video from. Um, very reliable news source. They do phenomenal podcasts as well, so do check them out. Um, so they're going to talk about a leak that happened in 2022. Uh, from an FDIC meeting. So let's watch it. So, so the audio that you're speaking about, it's uh, a clip from the FDIC Systemic Resolution Advisory Committee. Uh, mm -hmm. was recorded November 9th of 2022. Um, and well, you know, let's, let's play it and then we'll discuss it on the other <laughs> side because it's basically discussing the importance of perception management and how we shouldn't perception be too aware that this bail-in clause does exist. We'll play the clip. It should be accessible when people need to know, but I don't think you have much hope of, of reaching a public that doesn't have a professional need to know. Professional need to know. I completely agree with that. I almost think you'd scare the public if you put this out. Like, why are they telling me this? Should I be concerned about my bank? Like my insurance company doesn't tell me what they're doing with my assets. They just assume they're going to pay my claim, right? It's it's. I, I think you've got to think of the unintended consequences of taking a public that has more full faith and confidence in the banking system than maybe people in this room do. <laughs> that and they're laughing. They want them to have full faith and confidence in the banking system. They know the FDIC insurance is there. They know it works. They put their money in. They're going to get their money out. So there, there's a select crowd of people that are in the institutional side. And if they want to understand this, they're going to find a way to understand this. There's a bunch of law firms represented in this room. There's a bunch of people that'll charge them by the hour, a lot of money to explain this all to them. And, and, and it's fine. And I, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. And they all have huge staffs. But I would be careful about the unintended consequences of starting to blast too much of this out in the general public. Yeah, Lynette. When he talks about unintended consequences, he's talking about bank runs. He's talking about people taking their money out of banks. Because once you do that, banks no longer have the debts, they no longer have the liability, they no longer have the credit to convert into the assets. And <laughs> there's something called fractional reserve banking. So for every dollar, for every pound that you deposit into a bank, they lend out 90 cents, they lend out 90 pence. So the reserve is meant to be about 
apparently it's down to zero. Apparently it's down to zero percent now. So they don't they don't even have to keep any of it in the bank. Um, so the money isn't there. It's not there. It's just not there, guys. Long story short, it might be time to start taking some money out of banks, um, invest into gold and silver. Yes, I know I keep saying it, but it's just true. You just have to, like, you just have to, guys. You have to invest in gold and silver. Put Maybe even keep some money in cash. I know that's what some people are doing. Sure, inflation might be taking away some of that purchasing power, but it's the premium you're paying for that safety. That is the message of the video, guys. Banks are not safe. Um, try to keep as much in there as you need for utilities, bills, day-to-day um, -day living, because unfortunately we still have to pay in fiat currency for um, for daily supplies. So we still have to use it, but just keep as much in there as, <laughs> as you need for monthly, for month-to-month -month expenses. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the message of the video. I hope you found it quite informative. If you did, please hit the like button subscribe as well and do please share this video out with family friends colleagues people who need to know about this everyone needs to know about this that you can't really trust banks with your money anymore they are sitting on massive losses and it's probably going to blow up at some point at some point in the near future so please do protect yourselves take care of yourselves and i'll see you in the next video peace